Dr. Holt, let's talk about telomeres a little bit and their role. First explain what they are and then their role in, in our longevity. Certainly. As, uh, as we know, in 2009, Elizabeth Blackburn and her colleagues received the Nobel Prize for their work on telomeres and the enzyme telomerase, which supports telomeres. In essence, let's think about them as caps on the end of shoelaces. So if you look at a chromosome, which is found within the cell nucleus, you see this kind of bow tie-like structure. And on the ends are these caps. They are telomeres. And they're predictable DNA sequences. Now, we see that with cell division, recurring in the normal human body, these telomeres shorten with age. They become shorter. So if telomeres become shorter with age, it presents a, a proposition that lengthening telomeres may be advantageous. But the telomere plays a special role in stopping chromosomes sticking together and making sure genetic information is transmitted correctly. When you get a shortened telomere, you get towards the limit of the cell life, and the cell life finishes with what they call cell senescence. Senescence meaning old, which is really apoptosis that I referred to before, where you get cell death. Mm -hmm. So on average, uh, an adult cell can replicate about 60 times and these telomeres shorten. So the notion is um, looking at supporting the length of telomeres is a clear potential anti-aging intervention. Now, telomerase is the enzyme that supports telomere length, but it's not switched on in most cells. You see it in cancer cells, mm. you see it in germ cells, and you see it in stem cells but it's not expressed to a major degree in the normal human body. Now, obviously, something that will support telomerase activity or induce it will lengthen a telomere. But there's a little conflict here because telomerase is expressed in cancer and there's been concerns that, you know, that may be something that could promote cancer. That said, you know, the world leaders in this area, of course, dismiss that hypothesis. But it's a kind of a double-edged sword circumstance. And the world leaders in uh, telomerase uh, research, um, such as Geron Corporation, are developing drugs to interfere with telomerase activity as cancer treatments. Mm -hmm. Do you see the mm -hmm. enigma here <laughs> yeah. developing? But in essence, we now see evidence of telomere shortening associated with diabetes and insulin resistance. So we see a clear reason why diabetes mellitus is a disease of premature aging. Mm -hmm. We see an association in chronic stress with short telomeres. If you look at uh, caregivers of Alzheimer's patients, studies show short telomeres. If you look uh, at parents of children with ADHD, again, short telomeres. And now we're looking at certain things where reduction of certain nutrients are associated with short telomeres. So we're finding now a fundamental basis for all roads to lead to Babylon. And bear in mind what I just mentioned, this idea that, of course, telomerase expression and uh, telomere activity is extremely important in stem cell function. So we see how it's all coming mm -hmm. together. Now, let me just finish why I feel strongly about the triad. There's a very clear association between insulin resistance, which is the metabolic syndrome or prediabetes, and short telomere length. Mm -hmm. Now you see how everything's coming together and, you know, this is really what I believe is the innovative concept. Now, authors write about telomeres. Authors write about stem cells. 
authors write, you know, about calorie restriction, what I'm saying is this is an inextricable linkage of science mm -hmm. that's the future of anti-aging. So I'm very excited about it. And my book uh, obviously has to be revised as new information sure. comes forward, but the concepts are there.